All right, guys. So you got lucky, and Mr. Bosworth decided to work the basketball game. So um, he couldn't go home and get my Christmas decorations out. So I decided to go ahead and do y'all a video. So here we go. Let's do this. <clears throat> I do have your key already made to, um, sorry, to post, and it's right here. And I will get that posted with this video, and we will get this done. Stephen bought six books for $20.46. What is the constant of proportionality? The constant of proportionality right here is the key word. I'm going to use some colored pencils to kind of highlight some things. Um, constant of proportionality is our key right there. And then it says that relates to the cost, Y, to the number of books purchased, X. So it tells us our X and our Y. Constant proportionality is a dead ringer for the K equals Y over X. And we also know that it is unit rate, okay? So we want to write K equals Y over X. Told us that the cost was Y that the books purchased was X, so that's our books. We come back to the problem and we see that our cost was $20.46 and our books was six. And so <coughs> when we put that in the calculator, we get $20.46. Divided by six, three dollars, three dollars and 41 cents. I'm gonna write that over one, because you can actually, I, didn't, I haven't been doing this, but I just think I need to show you. You can extend that, put your one right there, and it's three dollars and 41 cent over one, because that is your unit rate. Same thing we were doing with our bridge maps with unit rate. So the answer here is B. K equals $3.41, which is our unit rate, okay? The table shows the data recorded from a survey to ask people how much their dog weighs and the amount of food they feed their dog. So we've got our survey and our survey results. Let's just kind of remind ourselves that on a table, the X is the top and that Y is the bottom, okay? X is the top and Y is the bottom. What is the <coughs> constant of proportionality? Constant of proportionality is our Q to know that we have K equals Y over X. That's also our unit rate. And then we wanna know how it relates to the weight, which is Y, to the scoops which is X, okay? So they're telling us our Y and our X right here. So we have K equals Y over X. Y is the dog. Actually, the weight of the dog. Let me change that to weight. And this is food. So we come, now we take this, we come back up here to our table and we can use any two of these points. I usually just grab that one right there at the front. I'm gonna write it Y over X. So we gotta go Y over X. We start at Y, I'm gonna do a little color right here. We're gonna go Y over X, okay? Y over X, which is three over two. And that three over two becomes one point five over one. So three over two is one point five over one. So our unit our K equals one point five. That is our unit rate.
three. The mile, all right, so we're looking at this graph. It says identify the unit rate on the graph. Well, unit rate, our unit rate right here is always going to be written on a graph as an ordered pair, and the ordered pair for unit rate is 1y. 1y. So x is always going to be 1, and then you've got your y value. So that means we're gonna come down here to our graph and we're gonna come over to X and then we're gonna we're gonna trace over to X and then up we're gonna come up to our line. Draw us and you see that little corner? That little corner is where our point is. And that point is at 50. So our ordered pair is 150. K equals Y over X, which would be 50 over one, which is 50. And that's the unit rate, which is C down here. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> which statement is true about the graph lines? I think I'm just gonna show you what I did on this one instead of writing it all out. I'm going to show you on my key that I've already got made. Which statement is true? It says, only graph A represents a proportional relationship. Graph A is not proportional because it does not pass through zero, zero. So that one is not the answer. That is not the answer. Okay? Graph B represents a proportional relationship. That's true, but we want to just check C and D, okay? Graph A and B both represent not, nope. Graph A and graph B are non-proportional, nope. Because A is proportional, B is not. I mean, A is not, B is. So that makes the answer there B. I'm gonna do the same thing with the next one. already have your key ready to go so all right looking at this one I you know I looked at these graphs this is proportional because it's straight and goes through zero zero this one's proportional it's straight and goes through zero zero so only graph a well no graph a and b only graph b that one's not it that one's not it graph a and b both represent proportional relationship yep graph a, and of course they're not both non-proportional so the answer is c but this is proportional because it's a straight line and goes through zero, zero. This is proportional. It's a straight line and goes through zero, zero. Those are easy. All right. And come back to this other one. Good thing I have extra copies on. All right. Number six. Number six is a little bit, a little, a little bit more thinking involved, but it's not hard. Which table contains only corresponding X values and Y values? where the value of y is four, more. All right, so the value of y is, I'll stop right there for a minute. The value of y is, is right here is equal to. So we can come right here and say y equals, so y equals something. Well, what does y equal? Y equals four more than, so four more than is gonna be plus four, because we're gonna have four more than something. The product of x and three. The product of x and three would be three x. So when we put all that together, we have y equals three x plus four. All right, so we gotta know that. Now, I wanna draw your attention to this. We did this back in the last unit when we were translating expressions and equations and we were doing verbal models and that kind of thing. I just want you to see how things are not going away. We, you know, they're pulling stuff from the last unit back into this one. But what you're gonna do now, what you're gonna do now is you're going to take that equation 
and you got to figure out where it fits, okay? So we're going to start right here. And we're going to say, okay, all right, y equals 3x plus 4. y equals 3x plus 4 is what I'm testing, okay? That's what I'm testing. So I'm going to take my y value, 18, equals 3 times 6 plus 4. Well, 18 equals 3 times 6 is 18, plus 4 is 22. 18 is not equal to 22, so that doesn't work right there, so that can't be the answer. When you get to the one that works, this side will be equal to this side, okay? When we find the one that works. Look at the next one. At, um, six, so now we're going to use these two values, okay? Y equals 3X plus 4. So we're going to take 14 equals 3 times 6 plus 4. 14 equals 18 plus 4. So 14 equals 22. 14 does not equal 22. That does not work. That can't be the answer. Let's check this one. <coughs> check this one. Y equals... 3x plus 4. So we're going to use these two values. We know it's not going to work. 6. Come on. 6 equals 3 times 6 plus 4. And you see, I don't know if, I mean, this 6 is the y. So I'm putting it right here. This 6 is the x. So it goes right here. Okay? That's what I'm doing. So we've got 6 equals 18 plus 4. 6 equals 22. No, that does not work. That's not the answer. So let's check the next one. I'm going to come right down here. And I'm going to do this right here. Okay? So we're taking y equals 3x plus 4. We're going to do answer, we're going to do the first value. The first value is this 22 and this 6. So 22 plus, oops, sorry, equals. 22 equals 3 times 6 plus 4. Three times six plus four. 22 equals 22. All right, that one works. Oops, there it is. All right. Now I'm gonna do this next one. We're gonna use the 31 and the nine. This is Y, this is X. So 31 equals three times nine plus four. 31 equals, and that comes out to be 31. That worked. That one works. Now, you want to go ahead and check all of them. Now of course, you can do all this in the calculator. Once you, you know, know 13 and 43. I'll we'll say 43 equals 13. Oops, 3 times 13. Plus 4. 43 equals 13. That's 39 plus 4 is 43. That works. And then the last one. 52 equals 3 times 16 plus 4. 52. This in the calculator also gives you 52. So that works. So this table right here. 
the X and Y values or the pat you know the rule here is Y equals Y equals three times X plus four. When you put this in, it's going to give you this Y value. So that is the answer. All right. Bright Smile Preschool requires there to be five teachers for every 24 students. Which equation represents the relationship between S, the number of students, S is the number of students, and T, the number of teachers, okay, at the preschool. The thing here that I wanted to point out really carefully is that this problem right here does not have any of those words that we've constantly looking for. Constant proportionality, proportion, unit rate. None of that's in there. So how do we know that's what we want? Well, the way we know that's what we want is when you see the word equation in the same, in the same sentence with the word relationship. The only equation that we have done that shows any kind of relationship is y equals kx. That's the only equation that we know that has done any semblance of a relationship, okay? That being said, we've got to take all of this now and come up with that. And we've got to decide. So we know that in order to use our equation, we've got to find k. So k, e k equals y over x. Well, there's no y. This one didn't tell us what your y and your x are. <coughs> so how do we know? Well, um, you know, I went through this with some of you earlier today. And the thing that we talked about was students per teacher. We know that we want to have per one. So let's come up here a minute and look at our ratio. We know we want to have one right there in order to have unit rate, right? So are we going to want the number of students to one teacher or the number of teachers to one student? The number of teachers to one student doesn't make sense. The number of students to one teacher does because you can have 20 students and have one teacher. But the number of teachers to students doesn't make sense. So, why here is going to be our students? <coughs> students per teacher. Okay? Students per teacher. So, the number of students was 24. The number of teachers was 5. When you do that in the calculator, you're going to get 4.8. That's K. All right? So we know, sorry, I hit my camera. We know that Y is going to equal 4.8X. But our answer choices don't have Y's and X's in them. So we have to come back and look, okay, what is Y and what is X? Our students were the Y. Our teachers were the X. So when you rewrite that again, you get Y equal. I mean, sorry, you get S equals 4.8T, which is B. S equals 4.8T. That one, that one took a little bit of a a little bit of thought. We was building us a pretty good chocolate cake right there. All right. So Mary's scrapbook can hold 44 photos on every 11 pages. Which equation represents the relationship between Y, the number of photos, and X, the number of pages? Well, relationship. Relationship screams as a, at us. Equation and relationship is y equals kx. But in order to do y equals kx, you've got to have k equals y over x so you can find k. 
K, so it told us right here, Y is the photos, X is the pages, so the number of photos, 44, over 11 pages is four. So K equals four. When K equals four, we come back to our Y equals KX. We put our four in right here for K. So Y is gonna equal four X. The number of cups of sugar Y Sugar Y is proportional, is proportional. So we know we can use our proportional relationship to the number of cups of flour X. Okay. Sugar is proportional to our flour. So we know we are going to be using our right K equals you know, whatever. So, the recipe calls for 1.25 cups of sugar for one cup of flour. So, K equals Y over X. Y is our sugar. X is our flour. Our sugar is 1.25. Our flour is 1. So there's our unit rate. K equals 1.25. Our equation, Y equals KX. We're gonna take that and put it right back in there, right there. Y equals 1.25X. Our favorite snack is gummy bears and dark chocolate mixed together. That sounds completely gross to me. Every time I've read this problem, I've thought, well. Okay, dark chocolate chips. I like gummy bears and I like dark chocolate chips. I don't think I'd want them mixed together. He uses the same ratio each time that he makes his favorite snack. The graph shows the sum. Hang on. The graph shows the data for some of Oliver's snack mixtures where point X, Y represents. Right here's cups of gummy bears. That's your X. And cups of dark chocolate chips. That's your Y. Okay? That's important to make sure you know. This says the point 1R indicates the unit rate for this mixture. Plot the point that shows the unit rate. Well, in order to plot the point that shows the unit rate, we gotta know what Y is. We need to know Y, not Y is in. So we need our Y value because the, the unit rate is gonna be, X will be one, and then we need to know what Y is. X will always be one when you're dealing with the unit rate, okay? But we gotta know why. Not why, but why. So, in order to do that, we're gonna have to use our K equals Y over X to determine what our unit rate is. And so we're gonna use one of these two points. You can use either one of them. This point is this point is at two, it's at two, 1.5. This point is at three, 2.25. You can use either one of them. I'll do them both to show you what I mean. So we're gonna do K equals Y over X. So that's gonna be 1.5 over two, which gives us 0 0.75. Over here, K equals Y over X. Y is 2.25, X is three, 
And again, you're going to get 0 0.75. So that means that K equals 0 0.75 over 1. This is Y over X. There's our X. That's our 1 right there. So our Y that goes with it is 0 0.75. So let me show you. So here's our X. Here's our X. That's our 1. There it is. And then our Y, 0 0.75, is right there. So that's the point we're looking for. That's the point we're looking for. So we're going to come over to 1 and up to 0 0.75 and put our point, 1, 0 0.75. And that's the answer. Number 11. So, let's just look at this graph for a minute. So, if you haven't kept how many Tootsie Pops she ate over the one month's time. She ate Tootsie Pops at a constant rate. To me, that ain't even possible. Because if you can get so far down on the Tootsie Pop you use, you're going to bite it. I don't care what anybody says. says she ate them at a constant rate. And she created a chart. So, let's look at her chart and look at these answer choices. The independent variable of number Tootsie Pops and the different variable of number of two spots. I ain't gonna let you skip that one. Come to the A. Let's see if we can find another one that's right. Independent and dependent variables, they play with my head. Point A is 510. That indicates that Sophia ate five Tootsie Pops in 10 days. Well, look at this. They're right. It's 510, but five is the days. 10 is the Tootsie Pops. This said she ate five Tootsie Pops, so that can't be it. She graphed point C for 25 days. The coordinate of point C would be 50, 25. If she graphed point C for 25 days, Well, there's only one way to do that. And we will come back to it if we need it. I'm going to just star that one. Point B is 2040. 20, that's your days. And 40 is your Tootsie Pops. And this says Sophia ate 40 Tootsie Pops, 40 Tootsie Pops in 20 days. She ate 40 Tootsie Pops in 20 days. That's the answer. D is the answer. C, we could come back and do C, but we would have to set that up to figure it out. We'd have to set it up to figure it out in a proportion. And I don't think, and, and so let's do it. Let's just see if it's true. The number of days or so we're going to do Tootsie Pops, Tootsie Pops over days because we're doing this one right here. Tootsie Pop over days because we want Y over X. So she says 25 Tootsie Pops. Wait, no. Sorry. That wouldn't be right anyway. That wouldn't be right anyway. 25 days would be on the x-axis. So that 25 would have to be right there. That can't be it. Because 25 would have, days would have to be the x. Days are your x. And right here they have days as the y. So that can't be it either. But it's pretty clear once you read answer choice D that that's what you've got. All right, and number 12, last but not least. All right, so what I did on this one, um, Anna Atlanta played her favorite songs in one afternoon and time length of songs. Her results are shown on the graph. Before I ever really started looking, I kind of glanced down here and I thought, you know what, I probably don't need the unit rate for these. So I took and I just did the unit rate for each one. I said A, I wrote the ordered pair, A's ordered pair is 
three. Six point seven five B's is four nine and C's was six thirteen point five. All right, so I wrote those first and then I said I'm gonna go and get the unit right. I'm gonna go on and do Y over X. I'm gonna do Y over X for A. 6.75 over 3, <coughs> and that was 2.25. Then I did B's. 9.00 over 4, and I got 2.25. And C was 13.50 over 6, and I got 2.25. So I've got that the unit rate is 2.25. K is equal to the unit rate, which is 2.25. No matter how you look at it. So now, looking at this, for 6.75 songs, 6.75 songs, this is really making you look at the graph. For 6.75 songs, the length of time is three minutes. No. The point nine four. We can't even get a they don't nine. This is X, this is Y. There ain't no nine. Indicates that that would be four songs. Four is the Y. And if you look over here, the Y is minutes, not songs. So four songs would not be right. That can't be it. The unit rate is 2.25 minutes. Yep. The point six, 13.50, indicates that it takes six minutes. The X is not minutes. This is X. It's The X is not minutes. The Y is the minutes. So minutes is not going to, that's what throws that one out. The fact that, that, that minutes is over here on the Y axis. You can't list that six right there wouldn't be minutes. It would be songs because we would move on the X first to graph it. All right. Well, let me know if you have any questions, but there it is. Have, have fun.